Welcome everybody to the weekly Quantum World Detangled, season five, episode four. I am joined by my friends and sponsor, Denise Rafner and Atom Computing. Hi, everyone. Welcome to today's episode. We're very excited about our guest, um, Enrique Lozano from Multiverse. And I'll let Enrique introduce himself. Go Thank ahead. you very much. Thank you very much, Denise. I am delighted to be here. I am Enrique Lizazo. I am the CEO and founder of Multiverse. And uh, okay, uh, as I always say, I am just a mathematician. So I am in a company full of physicists that they don't allow me to say something, apart from some special times. Today is one of these times. So thank you very much for inviting me. And, and we, we look forward to getting to know you a little bit. Actually, while uh, setting up the recording, I asked you about the poster behind you. And you said it's not a poster, it's actually like a canvas from a very interesting movie. Could you just say a couple of words about that? movie yes, yes, yes. right behind you yes this is a poster about a, a, an history from Arthur C Clarke that I think is a, is a very good poster for a quantum company this is about how to destroy the com the universe just by computing and spitting out the nine million names of God every time a computer or a maybe a quantum computer in the future uh, finds a, one of the names of God and spit one star will be full blown out. So when the nine billion name, names of God are pronounced by the computer, then everything ends. Well, we, nice. we will be sure not to say the other uh, 8,999,999 names uh, on this program, but uh, uh, let's dig into your personal life and career a little bit. Uh, you're calling us from San uh, Sebastian in Spain. Uh, you've had a long career with um, uh, starting as a professor in engineering statistics, only mathematics, as you say. You ended up in uh, banking, I believe, um, yes. and uh, ultimately startups. So give us a little bit about the, the life of um, uh, Enrique and how you got here. Today. Yes, thank you. Yes, it is quite an interesting story. Well, interesting story from my power point of view. Really, uh, if you dig enough in my history, you will find that I am, I am also a doctor. I started by... <laughs> As a, 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 medicine, a medical doctor, I still I am a medical doctor, but I have never practiced. I mean, much better for my would-be patients. So after that, I just uh, I decided, okay, medicine is not of my taste. At the end, after six years and so on, and decided, okay, let's go to do something different. And I enrolled in an MBA, an MBA from the ESA Business School. is one of those schools that I are from the Economy, and Financial Times, and so on. Quite good. Uh, and I really wanted to enter into IT, so I decided which is the best place to start doing IT. And I thought, okay, banks, and then banks will be. And I went into bank. Into. But uh, after just passing through, I think, uh, three years in IT, I decided, okay, I am, war I am bored, so I have to change inside the bank. And I, then I went into or planning and then into marketing also and then into co uh, control control is uh, just about co the controller uh, and so on and on and at the end i ended like as a deputy director of a bank here in spain in san sebastian where it's one just one of our four offices in the world the others are in toronto in paris and munich uh, okay after that uh, uh, i have all to answer always the same uh, question what is doing a, a, a physician inside a bank? Uh, quite difficult to answer. And I decided, okay, but I have always loved mathematics. And I studied mathematics. I got my mathematics degree. I got a, a PhD also, but this is in biostatistics. And I got a third degree, even that, yes, really, that's for real, in computer engineering. Okay, so uh, I was just at the top of the world as a deputy director of a small bank. And uh, what happened then, the 2008 crisis arrived. No bank, nothing ever more. And I say, okay, I'm, I am, uh, I'm just fed enough with all these kind of things. I have to start my own company because I have been always working for some others. And that should be much more interesting if I just uh, try to do what I have learned. So I start uh, some company. I have some experience on that, but at some point, 
In 2017, uh, okay, the quantum thing arrived. I read that paper, an article at The Economist. I remember my uh, the, 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 the classes I have in mathematics about short theorem and so on. I said, okay, this should be fantastic. Uh, but I have to do something. And then I know my other co-founders. Then in 2019, we start the company. And now we are 2022, 50 people here. We have to feed all of them, just giving uh, work and things to do. Um, we are still growing. And I am having much more fun than in the bank, and for sure. It's much better for my will-be patients in the future. September 15th, 2008, I was at the Lehman Brothers in, in Times Square, New York <laughs> City. Uh, I started my first venture two years later. It took me, uh, took me a little bit of uh, time to, to recover from that, but, uh, but thank you thank you to that crisis. Um, you're also oh, an yes. pilot. Uh, yes, yes, I am. I am. I am a private, uh, I have a PPL, which is a private pilot's license. I mean, I learned into, well, the first time I learned to, uh, to fly was on gliders. I mean, and it was on 1994. And then I, uh, I stopped flying. I don't know why. Uh, well, the reason was that there were no uh, air, uh, airplane fail, fields uh, near my home. And then I forgot about that. But in two, I think it was in 2010 or 2009. Okay. Uh, my wife uh, just uh, gave, uh, gave me for my anniversary uh, a present that was just a uh, recovery lessons about how to fly uh, 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 an engine, a Cessna uh, 172. And then, uh, boy, it was love at first sight. I mean, again, <laughs> then I learned how to fly. It was easier this uh, second time because this second time is about with an engine. This is much, <laughs> much easier than, uh, because you, 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 you can do some other things. Uh, here uh, in Barcelona, also in Spain, we have the, one of the largest, at this moment, it's the, the largest uh, air club in Europe. Uh, we operate 50, 50 different planes, which is uh, more than smaller planes. Okay, but there's more, uh, a higher number, a larger number of, of planes than uh, some airlines. And now we are there. I am also the, the treasurer of this organization, but this is a not for profit. This is just social thing. Uh, but flying is something that if you have never tried to do that, you should try. I mean, I, when I, I, I'm, I'm a sailor also for the social oh, reasons. The difference is that yeah. we... Uh, we can drink a lot of rum and still sail. That's probably different for pilots. Uh, yes, usually this is not uh, recommended. Just to do, to mix uh, 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 alcohol with uh, just flying a plane, unless you are the the, the not, not even the copilot. But I know you know if you are a passenger, things change. I mean, uh, probably you have this spirit just of flying and just full of of alcohol. <laughs> on the, uh, on I, the I'll, I'll stick to sailing. Um, I also noticed that you're on the governing body of the European Quantum um, Industry Consortium. My my real question behind that, I, I love that I'm I'm a European at heart. My father worked at the European Commission. I, I went to school in, in Brussels. Uh, oh. But you did, uh, if, if I'm not mistaken, all of your career in Spain, which is very unusual. Most of our other guests went to Japan, Australia, North America. <laughs> Um, you, you are a real Spaniard at heart as, as well. Yes, right? I am a Spaniard. I am a Spaniard. I mean, uh, when you just uh, work in, in, in a bank, for example, in a small bank, a local bank, and so, local in the Spanish way, I mean, uh, there are a few opportunities uh, just to travel abroad or just to do business. Why? Because banking, especially in Europe, is, uh, restraining, uh, is restrained to every country. Differently from the states where you have banks from coast to coast and so on, in Europe you have banks in France, and then you have banks in Spain, and then you have Fran banks in Germany, but we don't have this kind of supersized European banks. Uh, once said that, I mean, after I left the bank, I mean, I spent two years uh, working. I have a very small part in a health-related uh, service company, which was Omni, uh, Omnis Health, I mean. Uh, and I take care of the business development of the company in different countries, particularly uh, in some other company, uh, or countries from uh, in Europe. But then in Russia, I mean, uh, I, I had at that time a long-term visa for Russia, yes, and I mean, I have been just walking through Russia quite a long time. 
I mean, to, uh, to, to, to places that you will never know. And also in China, I mean, have been in China, I mean, in most places than most of the foreigners, just uh, having friends and so on. But this was a different uh, era. Now, uh, in quantum, uh, I mean, better you are restricted to, to, to Europe and United States, as you surely know. <laughs> and then Spain is a beautiful country. I uh, had the good fortune to do six months of an exchange in Salamanca which is a gorgeous, oh. crazy city. And as a good German, I spent many summers in uh, Mallorca or Mallorca, oh. as you say in, in <laughs> German. But uh, let's get back into uh, quantum and hand it over to uh, Denise to learn more about multiverse. Thank you, Andre. Um, Enrique, it's such a pleasure to have you on this podcast. So thank you again. Um, can you tell us a little bit about starting multiverse and who your co-founders are? Just give us a little history. Yeah, sure, Denise. Thank you very much for this question. Because Multiverse is an effort uh, now of 50 people, but at the beginning of four people. I mean, uh, I, I have the, the, the fortune just to, to find two super good tech uh, founders. One is Romano Rus. Uh, Romano Rus has more than 6,000 citations. I mean, he's a father of one of the uh, uh, quantum inspired uh, techniques uh, applied to the industry and so on, which are the tensor network, and he is also well versed in quantum. And also Sam Mugel, uh, French, uh, Anglo, and uh, now Canadian, <laughs> who is uh, also, uh, uh, he's also super good. He came from, uh, uh, he has a, a PhD, a double PhD from UK and also here from Spain, from ICFO and so on. And then we have a four, a four uh, founder, which is Alfonso Rubio, which is well connected. And this is something that you need at the beginning of the startup. I mean, you need to just uh, to, to reach to some large companies and just convince them that the things that you are doing are not sci-fi, but really th uh, things that you can really use to solve their pains. And so uh, we met in 2017 in a not for not for profit association the world quantum world association we decided to set up a, a, a work group in finance and we were two, 12 people yes i think that we were 12 people working there we decided to to prepare a paper that was quite well recited but you know what happens when when 12 people just start working without no without no pay I mean, at the end, only four people were working, and uh, these four people were the four founders of Multiverse. And then we decided that so the paper was good. Uh, the Canadians um, just uh, call us, uh, the Creative Distraction Labs. We went there. Uh, we noticed that our paper was distributed to the other uh, startups. And then we said, OK, uh, if our paper is uh, being just uh, the gift to uh, gave to is given to the other startups. Uh, maybe we are doing something wrong. Maybe we should just uh, focus on our own startup and make it grow fast and so on. And then we learn the, to play. We think we learn to play the startup game uh, the American way. I mean, <laughs> differently from the European way. Much uh, faster, ma uh, uh, higher growth. Uh, completely mad about just getting the talent, make it big, large, super large, and so on, entering, no, no, uh, have no fear about uh, taking risk and these kind of things. Uh, now we are here. Um, well, I, I did want to make a little shout out for Creative Destruction Labs in Canada as a really great incubator that some amazing quantum companies have come out of. Um, and so I just wanted to mention that for those of you that don't know about Creative Destruction Labs to look them up. Um, Enrique, you, you all finally, I, I can't say finally, but you all have a product called Singularity, which is very exciting. And I'm wondering if you would tell us a little yes. bit more about it. Yes, we are, we are excited about this product, about Singularity. You know, uh, when... Uh, uh, we have the, the quantum computers that we have. They are noisy, small, you can do nearly nothing, but you think, okay, can you find some useful or some things to, to solve faster that with 
some other computers or some other techniques. That it doesn't mean this is a quantum supremacy. It means that uh, uh, from time to time the industry, the banks, and some others use some special tools. And if you put a tool that works better in some cases, that's much better. Okay, and we find some cases, some interesting cases. Yeah, we started in portfolio optimization and so on. But then we thought, okay, this is super difficult to manage. I mean, can you imagine the, 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 the average user using a quantum computer and so on? And the answer was no, it's, this is not going to happen. So we need to simplify the use of, for example, this portfolio optimization or this uh, fair, uh, fair press, uh, price value calculator that we have already developed, we have to simplify the use. We have to put to, to, to put really easy for the user. And we decide, oh, so what are the people in the banking industry, in finance industry using most of the time? Um, Excel. Sure, Excel. I mean, even Bloomberg, even Bloomberg themselves, which is a large company, gives the solutions and the data on Excel and so on. We say, okay, that should be the case. So, and how should it work? Okay, you should put here uh, the prices, here the volatilities, here the constraints, and then you have to put a very uh, large button here, and then you have the optimization faster than with some other software uh, uh, tools. And that was, and we thought, okay, this is something. I mean, we have to put a uh, name to this system, which is complex because it's a middleware that takes care of just sending the the, the, the algorithms and the data to a quantum computer, get, taking them back and so on. But this system deserves a name and with it, okay? Singularity would be, and this was from the, from the, from the guys. This is much better from the, uh, a name that I, I couldn't have uh, uh, selected better. And uh, so you just had a lot of press about singularity uh, around the world, an amazing amount, I, I think, really good publicity. How have customers been responding to it? Quite well, in fact. I mean, uh, we have two different kinds of, uh, of customers for singularity. I mean, we have the customers that are just uh, putting uh, the solutions in singularity, for example, the portfolio optimization, just to optimize the portfolios. And this is uh, already uh, inside, for example, Caixa Bank, which is a company, a bank from Spain also. Uh, but, but we have a different uh, kind of customer as well. For example, uh, there are some companies that want to access the inner uh, routines of singularity themselves, the quantum algorithms, but in a, uh, in a very good way. And uh, in order to do that, usually what the, uh, the, uh, the large companies do is just they hire, not a company like us, but they hire a, a consulting company, a consulting company that takes care of uh, the deploying singularity and also customizing the, the interfaces and so on. And this is, for example, something that we are doing with some customers. We are, this is what we uh, are doing with Proactivity, which is a large consulting company also from Canada and also in Ally Bank, which is one of the banks uh, you have there, the former bank of the General Motors uh, in the States. Uh, so there are two particular ways that we are selling singularity, which is... <laughs> It's, it's astounding that you can put a, a real quantum computer to do that. For the sake of, 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 of um, completeness, I mean, singularity does not only uh, support quantum computers, but especially also quantum-inspired uh, computing like uh, tensor networks. And the best, by combining the best of the two tools of these two worlds, then you have a, a you make uh, make a point about just competing with some other air software, uh, classical current software. I insist this is not uh, not uh, quantum supremacy, but this is about giving a solution that is much better than the other solutions that the, the companies, the banks, and so on ha, at this moment uh, has available, and for sure much cheaper than hiring a supercomputer for doing some kind of of computations. So what I love about it is it's a practical application of quantum computing, and it's it's one of the earliest ones. Um, yes. I, it, and so th I think that just is so exciting to see solutions like this starting to emerge. Yes. So I, I'm a huge fan of it. Um, yes, yeah, are you, you are right. Yeah. Are you all involved in any other industries other than finance, or are you purely focused on finance? 
Yes, we are involving in some other industries. In fact, at the beginning, we thought that uh, finance will be enough for us. But the problem was uh, we had some incoming customers from energy and some others. Uh, and at the end, we decided, okay, uh, if all the people, our competitors, our esteemed competitors, for example, from the United States are in some other fields, maybe it's for good for us just to have a look at the other uh, fields, especially if we have people <laughs> wanting to, play, to pay us just for giving them uh, access to, to singularity and so on. And yes, we enter in energy and electrical markets. Uh, we are working with Repsol, NL, uh, which are two large European power providers here. We are working in, in, in smart manufacturing, which is mainly uh, predicting maintenance. And this is about quantum machine learning uh, with Bosch. Okay. We are also with ZIE, which is a large uh, auto part provider from Germany. Uh, uh, if you have a car, <laughs> you have pieces from ZF as well. We are also working with Ispasat in the space, and this is a different game. Uh, I don't, we don't spend to get uh, so much money from that, but it's nice to, to, to know. Uh, also, this year, okay, we are planning to enter into some applications of quantum computer, quantum and inspired, uh, quantum inspired computing, both of them, okay, in life science, okay, uh, uh, which is a tremendously good field uh, after the, the dramatic uh, 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 pandemic that uh, uh, 2019 just give, gave us. Uh, well, as a biologist, yeah. I'm excited about life sciences, so that's yes. awesome you know, to hear. You know, at the end, um, we only work with very, very, very few algorithms because there are always there are very few places where you can apply quantum computing. Just if you want to 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 solve a, a real real size real life problem, but we are focusing just in in very few problems of them. And so they must have a connection between the different fields. It's amazing. It's amazing. You go to finance and then you, you, you have a portfolio optimization and so on. But then you go to some particular uh, problem in manufacturing and it's always not optimization problems. And then you go to, let's say, life, life. And you want to do some protein folding and so on. And yes, you can, in, yes, you can understand that also if you want as an optimization problem and so on. So... It's this kind of connections in the, between the different parts of the of the of the science of the universe and so on is astounding. Uh, that's well said. That's well said. Thank you for that. I'm gonna um, thank you and hand you back over to Andre for the famous questionnaire. So Andre, <laughs> I'll hand it over to you. And uh, so, uh, so often, uh, quick follow-up question before we get to the famous questionnaire. Uh, Enrique, in your introduction, you said you had to learn the American way of doing startups, uh, aggressive, everything is great, and so forth. Sitting on the European Quantum Industry Consortium, what are you telling your European colleagues about you know, how European startups can maybe improve and, and vice versa? Yes, uh, you are right. I mean, this is a question that is not only about quantum and so on. all the Euro all Europe and the European Commission as well. And uh, we know that uh, most of the, of the, you can you can notice. I mean, uh, you are using a phone, okay, a mobile phone. Which uh, operating system do you have there in your phone? Either Android, either iPhone, okay. You remember Nokia? Maybe you are okay from Europe. <laughs> okay, that was low, are low, you sure low. <laughs> you even well, Blackberry. Okay, so what about cloud? Okay, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. you have AWS for sure. You can hire uh, AWS uh, ser uh, servers here in Europe, but where is AWS from? You know, or uh, Microsoft Azure? Oh, come on, what's ha what's happening in Europe? The thing is even worse. If I talk with some providers or some uh, 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 colleagues from mine to that are working on the other side of the Atlantic, you know, some of them where they came from, from Europe. <laughs> so the point is what's happening in Europe just for not having the kind of startups that the United States uh, have. Even worse, I mean, this is happening and happening and happening again. So 
uh, I think that one of the, 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 the lessons that the United States uh, has uh, given to us, and we have to learn and to think about, okay, is the real importance, the real importance of the growth and the fast and the access to the, to the, the, to the funding markets and to think global, okay? And just uh, to start from the first time, just to go there and also look, uh, think big, real big, uh, okay, and, and try to compete. And then in that sense, you become global and then you can uh, uh, behave in a different way. But the, 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 the worst barrier, the strongest barrier to do that is not outside, for sure. You can say, oh, in Europe, we don't have funding of the size of the, uh, or the United States, but you may go there if you want, yes, uh, have some things. But the real barrier is a mental one, uh, for sure. You have to change that. But this is my point of view, for sure. <laughs> I uh, feel like we're down to 8,999,998 names left, uh, not, not to call them out. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to our famous, as Denise said, Marcel Bruce, James Lipton inspired the questionnaire. Enrique has six <laughs> rapid fire questions, and your job is to give rapid fire answers. Uh, one word. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Maybe a challenge for you, but uh, we, we trust you can do it. So if you're ready, let's get started. <laughs> Yes, I am as ready as I can be, but I don't think that is too, of too much use. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll keep you accountable. Who is your favorite scientist, Enrique? Oh, uh, uh, Einstein. Sure. Einstein. Who is your favorite entrepreneur? My favorite entrepreneur? Musk. Elon Musk. Sorry. Everybody says that, yes. Yeah. What is the quality that you desire most in a scientist or an entrepreneur? Uh, uh, to be humble and to accept that, uh, the, that some others can uh, know something that you don't know. And this is quite hard to, to, to have. Most of the top level scientists, okay, they know everything. Even me. <laughs> I'm not a top scientist. You have the degrees to back it up, so uh, I, I would believe you. What do you appreciate <laughs> most about working in quantum tech? Oh, uh, the, it's difficult to express, but it's, it's the, 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 the feeling that we are doing something that is going to change the world. I'm going to leave my, my mark on the world one way or another uh, with quantum. And this is more personal. Like when I was a child, I, th I thought, okay, I, I'm here in the world, but I have to do something. Okay? And after 20 years in the, in the bank, I thought I'm not going to leave something. Maybe a mortgage or so on. Now I have exactly the same feeling. And bankers are important too. What is your yes, favorite sir. quantum tech application? Real or, or fictitious, computing or not computing? No, uh, okay. Fictitious in the future for sure, uh, code breaking. I mean, this is, I, I got in mathematics a, a, a major in cryptography. Okay, and it is something uh, quite, quite good. But my current uh, application, the good application here is uh, on the, on the, with the current quantum computers is uh, quantum machine learning, some applications for quantum machine learning, particularly in finance, okay, with uh, something we are doing with Great Agricole. Yes, it uh, can be done. What is your quantum dream? I mean, a quantum dream, just to end up with the world, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> but I think that you, mentioned, you, you mean some other dream. I mean, uh, for just... Dr dreams are personal. Do you have a quantum <laughs> nightmare, maybe? Well, I, uh, then I, sh I should say, okay, this is my quantum nightmare, which is a different kind of dream, okay? And, uh, uh, and uh, the quantum dream is to, to use the quantum to reduce the inequalities, okay? This is something that in finance we have talked uh, talk, uh, talk a, lo uh, a lot about that, because, you know, information is in the, sometimes, or a lot of, a uh, uh, high number of times, in the hands of some people, yes, and then you take profit, but as long as you are just reducing this kind of information and make more public or the, uh, make more equal the game, maybe the situation may change. And uh, last question, imagine, uh, you know, you go back to your house or apartment in San Sebastian tonight, tomorrow morning you wake up and you see a beautiful fault tolerant universal quantum computer in your living room. It's the only one in the world, it's yours, but you're not allowed to use it yourself. Who do you give it to? 
Oh, to my co-founders, for sure, they know how to use better. Because if I gave the, the, the quantum computer to my wife, probably she will say, a quantum computer, okay, she's a physician. I say, mm, okay, if I gave the quantum computer to my dog, it's, I don't know where it's, it's always to give to my dog. I have a chihuahua. No, okay, take, a, take this out. <laughs> Just erase from that. Uh, and if I gave the quantum computer to the government, uh, probably the government will, uh, uh, will, will have some ideas about how to use the quantum, this quantum computer, but not exactly. I'm not exactly sure that the ideas will be good or not good or so on. Uh, but if you are thinking that uh, we can, uh, in some particular person, uh, last person just to give this kind of quantum computer, okay, give the to those guys that are just uh, playing with the uh, uh, RNA and so on, vaccines, uh, this kind of thing of fantastic new technology, so they can develop even more fantastic technologies in life and make us live longer, happier and forever, like this new startup you are just creating there. Uh, Enrique, it was a pleasure. Thank you for the rapid fire answer. So Spanish uh, version. Europe is lucky to have uh, somebody with uh, your accomplishments, your background, your, your ambition uh, uh, working on the future. Uh, it gives us uh, all hope for Europe. Uh, don't drink and fly airplanes. This concludes <laughs> season five, yes. episode four of the weekly Quantum World Detangled. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Atom Computing. You are now Detangled.